Fred Karlinski from Greenberg Turing. Thanks so much for joining us in the Fraud Leadership Series today. Thank you very much for having me, Andrew, and thanks for putting this on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Always nice to get to chat about insurance and fraud. So I want to ask you this. We are more than a year into the pandemic now, and I remember way back in the beginning, the concept of workers' fraud, and people were wondering what will be covered, what won't be covered, how is this pandemic going to play into it? Obviously, we have not lived through a pandemic before. Here we are still asking some of these same questions. What are you seeing? Well, so no one's lived through this because if you were um, alive when the last pandemic hit this country in 1918, you'd be 103 at least now. And so I don't think you'd be worried about workers' compensation terms. But what we've seen is a lot of states um, looking at this, we've seen a number of executive orders, a number of state legislatures take certain action. And whereas workers' compensation was a pretty easy, and, and I don't mean that to denigrate any of the work our friends on either the plaintiff or defense or investigatory side do, but it was a pretty easy type of um, coverage, if you will. It's now become significantly more complicated. And what do I mean by that? Well, heretofore, when someone um, got injured on the job and you saw them get injured, or when, when they attributed some mental illness or some soft tissue injury that took a little bit longer to manifest, it was their responsibility, if you will, to prove that the burden was on them to show that it happened at the job site. Now, again, that's easier for certain types of injuries than others, although I would say, as you know, a lot of injuries do happen Monday morning for, for obvious reasons. But at the end of the day, you had a pretty good system that worked in most states. And, and, and to show that, workers' compensation insurance rates have been going down for a while. But here you have a, no, a whole new set of actors and players and rules and regulations out there to guide how workers' compensation is going to um, move forward. Now, of course, insurance is regulated differently in all 50 states, right, which always makes things a little bit more complicated. So let's say I'm an employee who you know, has a physical workplace. I go into work. I catch COVID. Is it just assumed at that point that that's a workplace injury? How does how does that work in different states? So let's talk about presumptions and let's talk, as you pointed out, all 50 states have their own insurance regulations, although they're mostly similar. But there are some unique um, nuances and in presumptions, there's some huge nuances. So in workers' compensation claims, in order to be covered, you need to A, be ill or injured. You need to have an illness or injury that arises in the course of employment, and that illness or injury must be caused by the employment. So in the case of uh, workers' compensation claims and coverages before the pandemic, it was pretty clear how those worked themselves through. If you were ill, if you were injured on the job, and it was as a result of your job, it wasn't you jaunting somewhere doing something you shouldn't be doing, then that would be covered. Here with presumptions, effectively, if you're employed in some respects and in some states, there's a presumption that because you're employed, that injury or illness, the illness of COVID, has been caused by the fact that you were on the job. It becomes much more difficult when you're dealing with things like work from home, but a number of states, a few states, have enacted these presumptions. Many other states have enacted laws and regulations that just say, or, or emergency orders that just say, hey, be kind insurers, try to take care of people as well as you can. But if you think about it, and this is probably the biggest issue, if no one ever thought that you would have to cover these claims before with this presumption now in effect in those states, you're gonna seek workers' compensation claims that you never anticipated when you were originally rated for those policies. And so that, in a lot of ways, is going to set the market up for failure in some cases, or at least into some type of a tailspin. And that's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Because, you know, in insurance, as I tell my uh, Florida State University Law School class, insurance is a unique product in that you don't know the cost of goods sold when you price the product. So you don't know what the losses are going to be but you use actuarial science to get you there. Here, there's no theory of actuarial science where they thought there were gonna be presumptions like the ones we're dealing with now. Yeah, truly uncharted territory, if you will, right? Times we, we weren't expecting and 
it's kind of crazy to think we're more than a year into this now and we haven't figured it all out yet. And unfortunately, I think there's still going to be some time to go before we do. But I, I like your the idea of fairness here, right? Doing what's what's fair and what's right. And, and hopefully we can all come to an agreement on that. So thank you so much for sharing your insights with us tonight. Really interesting to uh, to hear what's going on. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for putting this on. I look forward to talking again in the future. Likewise.